Hey, hi everyone. Today, what we are going to do is we have brought our, our cool dev with us to basically showcase us is like the recent development around the browser upload. Now, let me walk you through what exactly the browser upload means. It basically means like you don't need a heavy server running behind to upload your any data sets to a Sphere network or even an IPFS or wherever you want to whatever we support at this point of time, you can use your existing client as, as such. When I say existing client, it is your web client to you upload your entire data sets directly to the IPFS without any needing anything anything else. And then you are very good to go to start using Spheron's performance, Spheron's everything, whatever you get out of the box. So with us, Stromix, or you can call him Milos as well. Stromix is his Discord name if you want to like Talk, talk to him. So Milos will be like walking us through how exactly uh, the thing has been uh, built with certain code base or something. And then while he kind of does each and everything, I'll keep on like nudging him and asking him a couple of questions. So Milos, stage is all, all yours. Would love to hear more about the browser upload from you and like how our developers will be watching it can basically start using it. So yeah, hi everyone. So today we are going to talk about and see an example on how to use the browser upload package. As you can see on my screen, there is a description on how you can use it, which step and everything. But if you go to our GitHub repository, we also have this small example where can you go and get hands on the upload. And this example consists of two parts, the client side, which is the small React website and a server, which is written in Node and Express. And like, now let's go and try to start the server and client and see how everything works. Basically what you are, you are trying to say, Swamix now is like, uh, we have to go to the browser upload, which is an NPM package, which we are kind of published as SDK. Uh, is it not the part of the same storage SDK or it is different than storage SDK? Which it's we a have difference, to... yeah. So browser okay. upload package that is only meant to be used from uploading files directly from the browser, but it is used. So browser upload will be installed on your website or your client site and the storage SDK, you will have that on your backend side. Why do so you basically it must, it, 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 it must be a little light by nature, right? Yeah, yeah. The browser upload. Exactly. Okay. okay. So why okay. do you have backing and front and not, why can't you only have like client side? This is because to use and upload data via Spheron, you need to have the API token, which you create with us. And you do not, okay. you do not want to store that on your front end because everyone can access that token and use it and upload data on your behalf. If you have this token only on your backend side, you are the only one who has access to it and you can control, have logic that, uh, uh, which will control which ones of your users can upload data on your behalf. You can, uh, what's the name? You can control how much data they can upload, did, how much data did they already upload, and so on. So essentially, the token is private. Nobody can access it. And okay, so like basically, like, the... basically, yeah, so basically, like, we can kind of... Um optimize the um, the security risk as well here by like allowing people to access it for a certain duration of a time. And even in that duration, you can basically set the level of like what this particular token can do or who can do with that token. I, I believe is that feature is rolled out or it is still under the process uh, of development? No, no, it's at the moment. Okay. So that is token on... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So basically as we move on into this development, at this point of time to optimize the security risk, we kind of did is like we have a 10 minute of a, something which is fixed. By default, which you get as a session time, which you in which you have to upload anything utilizing that token, and then as we move on into this journey of the development, we'll add these. But again, it opens up a lot of opportunity for us to like keep on adding multiple values on top of it. But it, but we'd love to see like how to do it, and I might have not seen it yet. For the, I'm also seeing it for the first time, so hope it works. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. exactly. So when you clone this repo, you can clone it and go inside it. I hope. My screen. Said, so can you please go have... back to again on the on the on the repo side? If if one more one more time, just open your repo again. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, so the repo is like Spheron FDN slash SDK. Uh, that is where you have to go to basically download this uh, or to take a look into this particular yeah. SDK. If you are in npm, you can just click on this repository yeah. and you have everything there. Yeah. So npm yeah, is but... much more straight. Mm, of course. So for the server side, it's like a server 
with one file. And what we need to do to start it is first execute npm install. I already did it, so no need. And you also need to add this env file in which you will only have one of these uh, variables, Sharon token, which will have the value of your API token. To create that token, you go to the Sviron app. Log in. And in your settings page, there is this tokens section in which you can create tokens for each or for any organization that you want. Just when creating the token for storage or browser upload, be sure to create the web app type token. So yeah, only web nice, app token nice, is very good. Quick. And is it is it for the scope? What what exactly the scope is here? Can we can scope we this is, mm -hmm, is the organization for which you want to create the token. So at the okay. moment, on when you create an API token, you can only use it for that specific organization. And okay. this token, if you want, you can go to this Swagger documentation. And this is all the endpoints that you can use with that token, as you can see. Awesome. This awesome. Quite a bit. And when you create a token, you add it the value here. And if we look in this index.js file, we only have this one endpoint, initial upload. And what it does is it has the Sveron storage package. And from that package, first we create the Sveron client, which is used uh, with this Sveron token variable that is it .env. And we call this method called create single upload token. What this method does is it creates a token that can only be used to upload data once. So how okay. the general flow, we didn't, I didn't mention that, for the uploading data from browser. From your web app, you create a request to your backend service on which you will create this single use token. When you create that token, you will return it to your web application and you will use that token with the browser upload package to upload data directly from your browser to IPFS or Filecoin or RV. So you don't need, it will be faster first because you don't need to upload data first to your backend server and from backend server to uh, Sferm. And also in our package, we also have like chunking and parallel uploads. So there are some of those benefits as well. So, awesome. So that uh, basically means like earlier when we kind of discussing this kind of problem, like we had this one where a, a user has to basically run their own a server, a heavy server, basically to upload anything. First, basically, they have to cache it in their local and then upload yeah. it to their global and then from global to Spheron. And then, so it was multiple hopping which was happening. Uh, with this approach, I think that hop will be like one max where it just go to Spheron and that's it. And your job is yeah. done. You already get your IPFS hash or whatever you are looking for and then start using it. So I believe it is going to open a lot of opportunity and the door uh, for speeding up the entire process of upload. I think it is. It cannot be just only used on browser. It can be used anywhere. I, if, if I if I'm if I'm not wrong, like so you, uh, we can we can use it in mobile devices. We can use it in anywhere else, right? I didn't try it, but yeah, in general this flow should work like that. Okay. Not sure, like if there are some differences in node environments for mobile and also on, but yeah. I don't in think general, it, there would be any 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 differences. Yeah. I think it is going it is going to work out. But cool, man. Would love to see more. Okay, and this is the whole server site. So here now you can create like bucket name. You can have for each of your user a unique bucket name. You can split it up however, uh, whatever you want. And also you can use whatever protocol you want to use. So after you create the upload token, you return it in the response. Okay. And this is the whole example in our server. And if we can start it, and now let's take a look at the client side. For the client side, you just need to install the packages. So run npm install or yarn install. And you can also just run npm start and that's all. So 
Okay, so on the front end side, we just have to make a call to my server to pull that new token which we have, and then pass that new token into the front end code to kind of upload it. Yeah, let's try and see. Like, let's just upload so everyone can see. So I selected a file I wanted to upload. When I click on upload, something is happening, and if I go click, I got the link. I uploaded this image that I wanted. Now that let's take awesome. a look at the code. It's also pretty simple. So all the code that we have is in the upload component. And what we have here, when the user, so as so, we have the select file. This is just to select file. But what happens when the user clicks on upload? So here, we first send a request to this endpoint which is the server that we looked at like a minute ago. So this is that endpoint. And in the response of that endpoint, we get this upload token. This is the token that we will use with the upload function from the browser upload package to upload files directly from the browser to Sphera. So awesome. as you see, we can we, and there isn't any other parameters. You pass the files that you want to upload. This is the standard file uh, object that is exists on browser. And you pass mm -hmm. this token. The upload result will contain the ID of the upload. Of the, uh, and also the protocol link. This is the IPFS or RV link that you got. And also the NIMIC links. What is this? This serves all the links that you get for your bucket. For, by default, you will get a Spheron link for your bucket, but you can also attach your custom domains or subdomains, etc. So when so, we say bucket, a bucket is going to hold a number of different images into it, or is it going to be yeah, pointing yeah. to one, one assets? So what we have a bucket and an upload. Bucket is an object that has a name and is uh, consists of multiple uploads, especially. Each bucket has one domain by default that we create, and you can attach your own domains for your bucket. And now when you create an upload for a bucket, what will happen? All of your domains will get uh, updated. So they will point to the newest uploaded data. So what- I said. So is it going to be single? So let's say if I'm uploading a folder or, in, or like the entire folder as such. So, is it going to like, if I say xyz.com or even, even my dynamic link is going to open that bucket where I can see 10 different uh, files or is it going to just directly navigate to a file? It will depends how you structure your data. So if you, okay. for example, now, because this is how like all services work, because this file doesn't have, if I go, doesn't have a real name, this will upload yeah. all the folder that you uploaded. But if can you op op open open the dynamic here, link, please? Yeah, of course. If we go here, we get yeah. So system. that is what I was asking. <laughs> so it is basically like it just maps your bucket. That bucket is where you can just dump in whatever the content you which you want to, and it is always going to find the latest content. Yeah. Right. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So, so with each upload, you will get if the data is different, you will get a different IPFS or protocol link. But this dynamic link will always point to the latest upload. So you don't, it won't be changed. Got it, got it, got it, got it. So, so basically, yeah. So it, that will not change. The Eva will change, keep on changing whenever you the content yeah, will change. Can, uh, but the video one will not. Yes. So let's try, like, if I upload this on X photo, because the bucket name is the same, it will use the same bucket. And. Ah, uh, okay. 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 You see this? So but basically, the link, depending on the bucket name, it will change the link. Yeah. So essentially, bucket name is ID. It will be unique per your organization. If Got you it. upload data for the same bucket, that dynamic links will get updated. Okay. Got yes. it. I believe, I believe that makes sense. That, that makes sense on, on the code side as well. Uh, is there anything else you want to share? Like, I believe we have covered everything, or is there anything which we missed out? That's... It essentially what I wanted to say, yeah. If there are bigger files, you can they will be chunked into smaller pieces and uploaded in parallel. So there is 
like performance boost there as well. And so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Awesome. Uh, so basically, tell me one thing is like, let's say if any file is getting uploaded, right, from the browser upload, is it like, am I going to get any kind of status of like, what is the status of the upload? We don't have that, right? So that user has to click. We, uh, we have a method that supports that. So but I didn't, uh, it doesn't exist on this example, but there is this on method okay. called on trunk upload. So this method will be called each time this trunk is uploaded. And this is the trunk count, how many trunks exist. So with okay. this, users can create their own like progress bars, and, et cetera. But awesome. Awesome. This is what I was kind of, look, kind, of, kind of looking for. But again, thank you so much, uh, Milos, for uh, kind of showing this demo. Now, the beauty is going to be it is like anyone into the web, into the world can go and use Spheron's browser upload option without like, like without, without querying about the question is like, do we, I need to run a new server for uploading to IPFS or somewhere? No, you don't. You just have to use browser upload and that's it as a SDK in the front. And it's very small, uh, small miniature server, or you can use the same, your existing server where, wherever you are running, just create that endpoint, which can give you uh, the uh, return part of that token, which you can have to just use in the front end to upload your whatever data you are kind of looking for. So thank you so much, and uh, Swamix for, for for showing us the entire example. It was really great uh, to see that. And again, to all the listeners, thank you so much for listening it, and we'll be more than happy to like get, take, uh, get your feedbacks uh, once you are going to see this video. Uh, don't forget to show us some love in wherever you are kind of seeing this video. Um, so looking forward to that. And again, we are always here to hear your feedback. Shoot us your feedback on our Discord channel and navigate to the site Sphere Network where you can find each and everything, whatever you're looking for.